So we're going to be working with SQLite. And in a previous lecture, we already went ahead and installed the packages in all of our projects. On Windows, we had to do it from the solution just once. On Mac, we had to do it once per platform. But our project should be already good to go. Now, I briefly mentioned in the previous lecture that because iOS and Android work slightly different with their files and their directories are different, we will have to code a different functionality or a different setup in each platform. Again, on Xamarin, especially on Xamarin Forms, you're aiming for almost 100% code reuse. There are going to be some scenarios where there has to be a slight difference, as is the case that we're working with right now. Because we're going to be working with a SQLite file for the database, that has to be stored on the phone and Android and iOS are going to be slightly different, we do have to make that distinction. Now, actually, Xamarin has been very good at minimizing the changes that are required. And if Apple didn't have a small restriction that I will talk about in the next lecture, this could actually be identical. But I do want to mention that you could always add specific functionality for each platform. So let me go ahead and close these files that we have in the shared project that we're not going to be using right now. Navigate over to the Android project and find the main activity. If you have ever worked with Android development with Java, or just native Android development in general, you should know that we work with activities on Android. Activities have their own UI. And this is exactly the same layout of a traditional native Android project because it actually is only using C Sharp in this case. And that is why we see a main activity. We do see some changes. For example, this is inheriting from a forms app compat activity that Xamarin created. But overall, this is going to be quite the same thing except of course that we're not going to be defining the UI on XML because we're already de defining it through with the help of summary forms with XAML and C Sharp. So the thing is that here, notice that we are loading the application and we see here an app class that should be very familiar to you because we saw it over here in our contacts shared project. We see the app class right here and it is where we define the main page to be a navigation page. This is how the Android application is using our shared project, Summary Forms, to initialize the UI through the load application method and initializing it to a new app. Now, what we will have to do in here is leverage the fact that we can connect somehow to the main project or the app class in this case to pass to that project where, in the case of Android, is our SQLite database going to be located. So right before calling the load application, I want to define where is this file going to be located. And let me start by defining a string for the file name. Simply how my database is going to be called. And the file name is going to be contacts underscore db dot db tree. The extension is not that important. This could even be a txt or something. Let's just call this a db tree file already and store this on the file name. Now, now that we have the file name, we should get the folder path. Where is this file going to be stored? And here is where the difference with iOS is going to be important. On Android, there are really no restrictions in here, but I do want to get a specific folder path. So let's go ahead and search for the environment class. Now, as you can see, there is one environment class in android.os. This is not 
the environment class that we need. The environment class that we need is inside system. So system.environment, very important that we specify this then because there are two environment classes available. So we have to specify their namespaces. So system.environment is going to contain a get folder path method. And the get folder path method is going to require the name of the special folder for which we want to get the path. And the special folder, we can receive it or search for it by writing system.environment.special folder. And in this case, I'm going to be searching for the personal folder. This is a folder that already exists and that Samarin can map to a specific path inside of the Android ecosystem, the Android operating system. And so its path will already be inside of the folder path variable. The last thing that we have to get is the complete path, which is going to combine the folder path with the file name. Now it's not as easy as just combining them as you would combine any two strings. There is a small science going on with the paths that you have to establish. So for us to not complicate things, let's just use one very easy way. There is a path class that we have access to. Now not immediately, but notice that if I write or type on my keyboard on Mac, Alt enter, I see options of how to resolve this error that I have here. Because immediately path is not recognized. Notice that it says that the name path does not exist in the current context. So all I have to do on Mac is type Alt enter or on Windows control dot and see that I can solve this by adding a using statement over here. And notice that using system.io has been added and now path is recognized. And path is going to have a combined method that is going to receive as many strings as we need. In this case, we can pass the folder path and the file name. And now complete path is going to have the entire path to the new file that we are creating in here. All there is left for us to do is pass this to the app. But of course, right now the app doesn't receive anything. If we navigate over to the app class that is inside of the shared project, we see that it receives nothing. But we can actually create a new override of this constructor and tell this constructor that it is going to be requesting the final path. This is going to do the exact same thing. It's going to call the initialize component, it's going to set the main page, but it is also going to receive a file path and it should assign it to a variable that we are going to be creating. So variables, by the way, should always be defined before the constructors, or it's not absolutely necessary, but it's a good practice. And what I'm going to do is define a public static string that is going to be the file path. It is going to be static because we should not need to instantiate the app class to be able to access it. And we're going to assign its value from the second override of the constructor to the file path that is being received through the argument. So eventually we will be able to access the file path from any other page, defining it here on the app class. And because the app class is the first thing to be created when we run the application, right here in the load application call, the file path will be established and we will be able to access it from the contacts page and from the main page. All there is left for us to do then is here when calling the new app constructor use the constructor that we have just created and pass the complete path. Here, we have established, at least on Android so far, where is the file for the database going to be located and we have sent it already to the app. So Android is already 
good to go for us to start saving and reading from these database. Now in the next lecture, let's go ahead and do the same thing for iOS.